I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Corman? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Swicker? Here. Ms. Breyer? Here. Mr. Prince? Here. Mr. Person? Here. Ms. Palmer? Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor. All present. Thank you. First item on the agenda is a proclamation. Proclamation. Whereas experience has shown that government by itself cannot solve all of our nation's social problems, and whereas volunteers are vital to our future as a caring and productive nation, and whereas volunteering of one's time and resources is a fundamental part of our community's tradition and is essential to its spirit, and whereas the entire community benefits directly or indirectly from each and every act of volunteer service, and whereas volunteers working in our community give their time and talent daily to make a real difference in the lives of our children, adults, the elderly, and the frail, and whereas volunteers can connect with local community service <coughs> opportunities through the City of Renton's volunteer program and hundreds of community <coughs> service organizations. And whereas the volunteers who give their time and expertise to improve the quality of life for the citizens of Renton are a great treasure and deserve special recognition. Now therefore I, Dennis Law, Mayor of the City of Renton, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2013 to be Volunteer Month in the City of Renton. And I encourage all members of the community to commit a portion of their time to volunteer service. By volunteering and by recognizing those who serve, we can perpetuate the spirit and vitality of this great city. In witness whereof, I have hereunto <coughs> set my hand and caused the seal of the City of Renton to be affixed this first day of April 2013, signed Dennis Law, Mayor of the City of Renton. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Taylor. I move that this proclamation be adopted as read. Second. And moved by Mr. Taylor, seconded by Ms. Breyer, that this proclamation be adopted as read. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. It's my pleasure to present this to Bonnie Warisich, who knows more about <laughs> volunteerism than anybody in the city. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Law and council members, it is my pleasure to be able to accept this proclamation on behalf of the thousands of volunteers that we have in the city of Renton. Um, each year we try and capture the number of hours and the number of volunteers that give service to the city of Renton, but it's just a small percentage of the people who give their time throughout the community. They're coaches, they are uh, Sunday school teachers, they are individuals who walk our parks and because they care so much and are so passionate about our parks, they'll take the time to pick up a piece of litter. All of these hours contribute to the unique uh, well-being of our community and, and we just couldn't do our jobs or function as a city without their support. So um, just a couple of things to call your attention to. Volunteers assist with victim services, emergency preparedness, they help with programs, festivals, events, they serve on our boards and commissions, they help do beautification projects in the parks, they give counsel, they organize, clean, coach, build, teach, inspire, and do so much more, giving of themselves because they believe in the cause and they believe in the city. So many community programs and services are made possible because of the dedication efforts of these volunteers. And so again, it is my pleasure on their behalf to accept this proclamation. Thank you so very much. Thank, thank you. you very much, Bonnie. And thank you for all the work you do with our volunteers. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, moving on to administrative report, Mr. Covington. Mr. Mayor, I have no specific report tonight. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Now we're moving on to audience comment. Um, we have several people signed up to talk about the library and um, as always please come to the podium give your name and city of residence for the record and you have five minutes keep an eye on the timer next to the city clerk i also want to make a comment last week uh one one speaker started to make disparaging comments to a council member and staff people we're not going to tolerate that so please keep your topic to the 
issue and not make it personal. So first to Susie Yeary. Thank you. My name is Susie Yeary. The last name is spelled U-R-E. I'm a resident of Renton and I'm actually on the Renton Library Advisory Board and I'm just here as a private citizen and Renton homeowner. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. Um, I'm not fond of speaking up here like this, but I can't hold back anymore. I may read because I have a whole lot of stuff I want to say. My first topic is numbers. The group referring to itself as the 76% do represent 76% of the voters in last August election. They are only 28% of registered voters, which is not a majority, and only about 18% of the estimated adult population. With their very vocal and assertive campaign, it would have been very difficult for a Renton voter to not be aware of the library location issue. The other 24% of the voters, plus all the indifferent non-voters, are a clear majority of 72% registered voters. So please remember this majority when you decide on the future and quality of Renton's services <coughs> and amenities. And Mr. Corman's analogy about replacing a service provider was interesting, and it does work really well when there's a lot of them. There are a lot of cell, cell phone providers, a lot of cable providers, so if someone's unhappy with it, you can go find other service. The previous provider of library services does not exist anymore. It was absorbed by the new provider, and I think it was willing, willingly done so. It's not known if Renton library could realistically be recreated. The annexation was considered at least in part because of the cost of operating a standalone library. The burden to the city to support an independent library would still exist and not go away. If there is no Linton library, there is no entity to reciprocate KCLS's service. And Renton citizens, I hate to think it, but it's it's imaginable with nothing to reciprocate with that we could have no library access. And I see that as drastically affecting our overall quality of life and perhaps even our property values as well. Now, I moved to Renton about 13 years ago. I've been a KCLS user since the, since the 1980s. I checked to see if, it would, if Renton was in their service area and I was told it wasn't. But if I had a Renton library card, I could still use KCLS services. And I say services because the library is a system of services. They're not all housed in a building and the services are more than just the books on the shelves. You know, I moved here. I'm glad I did. We've got a great looking mayor. <laughs> that probably will never die. Um, but the Renton Library address in hand, I drove past it. I drove around it several times before I actually found it because it's not really noticeable. Last week, we saw pictures of the current building and a conceptual design of the new building, a new building. I would say that both of them have that low slung profile of a mid-century modern building. The existing building, I hope, I mean, I think it's dull in color and it appears rather dark and not particularly inviting. And I find the lightness and openness of the new concept to be much more inviting. And visitors, where am I? Um, will be more likely to actually find our really cool library that's over the river and has a gnarly tree on one side and a charming sculpture on the other. So I can support this location, especially with a modern library building to house the many services that KCLS provides. So in closing, I would like to say that the tone and volume of someone's comments do not actually add to their substance and validity, except for mine. <laughs> and as I said in the beginning, I represent myself, but who knows, I may be speaking for some to many of the 70, other 72% of the Renton voters. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Paul Olette. Good evening. My name is Paul Olette, retired. Uh, construction project manager from a large consultant firm. I have some notes here that I'd like to have you, if I could please, give you some handouts so that you could give them to each one of the council people. And there should be an extra one for our MBA also. Okay. Thank you. 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 Out of focus. Thank you. 
Uh, Jay, can you help him with the focus on that? I don't know. I'm sorry. Oh, that little wheel right there. Okay. I'm sorry. This one here is kind of detailed, and uh, uh, the reason I, I handed out a copy to the council people and so on so that you could follow my, my uh, observations and comments, okay? And I won't go, you don't need to be able to read it here too, too much, but I just want the audience to see it. And I'd like to talk to you about what ifs. What ifs. You've all been experiencing a lot of very negative inputs from a numerous of citizens in the past weeks. In fact, some of you have said that you have spent more time on the library issues since the annexation with KCLS than you did before. You had the responsibility for a library and its own. In fact, I understand that the council is looking at the annexation next week, and others may want to even address renegotiation of the ILA. Well, what if all of a sudden you found a solution that all citizens could get behind you in a positive way to support your efforts with KCLS. Would that not be a powerful political move to each one of you? What if there was a way that you could provide an avenue by which KCLS would have to build you a library that incorporates the main issues of contention, namely a library with 22,000 square feet and provides entry at the bridge? I want to present a scenario tonight to do just that, to give you some thought when you're considering next week at the Council of the Whole. Given that you have $8.9 million to spend, let's look at, at it by thinking outside of the box. Based on the schematic design presented by Miller Hall and their estimator Ron last Tuesday, we have the basis for what the, connect, the construction cost should be. We also have program budget breakdown from KCLS of the $8.9 million. We now have evidence that KCLS had purposefully saddled their architect with a $5 million construction budget to assure that no more than a 15,400 square foot library would be proposed. First, we'll discuss where would the money come from, okay? You all recall how on a number of occasions we have questioned the KCLS budget breakdown. We now have further evidence that it needs to be reviewed by professionals and justification provided for the allocation of the $8.9 million budget. Sorry, I'm going to go back to this one here, okay? The, uh, on the reverse side of the, of the page, the first page that you got, on page three of the KCLS budget. At the public presentation last Tuesday, Greg Smith refused, or KCLS, refused to answer questions about the fees in his budget, stating that it was too noisy. However, Millhall rep representatives stated publicly that their design fees were 11% and well within the state guidelines. We see in the breakdown that indeed basic services plus additional services add up to 12.8%. You'll see in the breakout here, fees down below under the Miller Hall design fees in the budget. You'll see the consultant basic services fees and the consultant additional services fees, they add up to 12.82%, which is well within ballpark. It passes the smell test. However, KCLS has added another 14.9% for other additional design fees in the budget for a total of $780,000. That is shown right in here. If you read through and on the back side, you'll see in the KCLS breakdown all the items that they have added for additional service consultant services, which are, to my understanding of program budgets is inappropriate because those are covered in the basic services. Furthermore, we find another list of inappropriate cost allocations in the KCLS budget, namely for costs for site improvements and design contingencies that are suspect. Here they are in summary. They show excessive fee presentation. Okay. Excuse me, Mr. Rollet, your five, your five minutes is up. Is, uh, do, you okay. have, do, you, right. do you have a summary comment that you'd like to make? 
No. Okay. Uh, I have another person that's going to okay. yield my time. Okay. Thank you. Jean. Good evening. My name is Jean Nolet from Renton, and I just yield my, yield my time to David. I can't even oh. talk. <laughs> I want to yield my time to Paul Ouellette. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry, but I arranged this. <laughs> <laughs> You'll see in this presentation in here that <coughs> that uh, on the reverse side is page two of the KCLS budget. We see over six hundred thousand dollars for off-site improvements on contingencies, which the city has said will not be required. There's another three hundred thousand dollars for an unknown item as contingency for signage. Then we have seven hundred eighty thousand dollars for the previously mentioned KCLS additional design fees for a total delta of a million and three quarters. That should be available for construction. Now let's look at how we can get a 22,000 square foot library. I have run an estimate, okay, using the KCLS figures. There's the, the, uh, the slab that was going to be demolished, okay. Showing, if we show the net, for $1.3 million using the, the KCLS, the KCLS uh, owned est estimate, okay, we would have in this other package of information here, which please send it over. Using the same basic square foot cost that Mellahal and Ron use, okay? We could build, we could have the additional uh, 4,000 square foot bay, five point, uh, bay 5.6, that's shown as de being demolished on the schematic design. And for 1.3, I lost my place. For 1.3 million dollars, we could, we could have an extra 4,000 square feet of library. Uh, the total library then would be 19,500 square feet with the possibility of the entry at the bridge because now it would be up against the bridge. Since we cannot be connected, now, now that we have not addressed the cost savings for demolition, okay? Next, in addition to that, we also have a situation where we, we have this beautiful pile cap that's being designed over there on the north side, which is the, on the Liberty, Liberty Park side, okay? That, that amounts to a 4,000, uh, I mean a 2,000 uh, square foot facility, 2,500 square foot cap. If we bring it up to grade, rather than bury it to plant some trees, we would have a wonderful foundation at north to cost to provide a wing or expand the facility by 20 feet. It could be even separated time seismically with the rest of the structure, okay? I have here the cost estimate which I have given you, okay? And that that 2,500 square foot bay, so for three quarters of a million, we could add another 2,400 square feet along with 4,000 square foot bay of a library for a total of 21,900, close to the, the existing building square footage without violating the environmental permitting issues or remodeling over the river. We need to end up with additional 2.1 million construction costs for a total budget of $6.96 million. So the idea is, is how do we get there? We'll get there with this excessive budget that KCLS has presented. If we allocate the design fees to Miller Hall of 11% for the extra square footage, we, uh, we still have approximately a million and a half, $1.5 million available for construction added to the schematic design estimate of 5.24 million, we would have a construction budget of six and three quarter million dollars versus a cost estimate of, of almost seven million. Surely if the city was able to come up with 4.8 million for smart meters, they surely can find additional dollars for the library. It appears to us that the city should consider retaining the services of an independent program cost estimate to evaluate and confirm what we're pointing out here and also that the city needs to seriously consider renegotiating the ILA to assure that we end up with a 22,000 foot square library. That is an option to the annotation. Thank you for your time. Good, thank you. Next is Howard McComber. Uh, 
Uh, Howard McComber, live in the city of Renton. McComber's M C O M B E R. I too attended the uh, library meeting last week. Uh, there were three things were good. Number one, there was a great turnout. I think that was that was wonderful. It shows the volunteerism of our city, which is tremendous. Um, I had some. I had it. A note that the people who were there asked some very good questions. I was concerned about the interplay between the two. Now I'm going to give you my own personal opinion. I don't know that much about library systems from what I understand. King County Library System, as far as running a library, <coughs> is very good. I haven't heard anything really negative about running a library. I think that they don't know a lot about two areas that I'm concerned about. Number one is buildings, and number two is our building. One of the fellows stood up and asked a question that I was interested in. He said, without changing this building, without changing the square footage, without changing anything in it, leaving it just the way it is, uh, would you give me the cost for retrofitting it so that it's seismically all right and compliant. The person who is giving us all the technical information hadn't a clue, hadn't thought of it, hadn't done it. They didn't have it. That, that was very concerning to me. That should have been done the day after the election. I really think if I was to put a solution, a Howard McComber solution on this, it would be that we get that answer, that we find out what it costs to retrofit that building, make it seismically correct, bring it up to standard, whatever it takes, and have that figure. I think you need to have that in your, del in your deliberations, because I think that's what the people have asked for. We've asked for that. I would have thought they'd had the figure the next day, and it wasn't there. And they didn't have it last night, and they couldn't come up with it. That is very concerning. So my belief is that we need to get some more information. And I think that King County Library System probably has not had anyone like Renton before than before. <coughs> we are a volunteer town. I'm looking at a whole bunch of volunteers that I see all over the place, whatever I go, doing what I do too. And I think that we are going to have some wonderful volunteers like Paul. I think that the effort, the time that he's put in, doing the most positive response that he can is great. And I think that perhaps the things that he has said are worth noting. Now you're the, you're the folks who have to make the final decisions around here. But I would be asking for those, those figures and that data because I think Personally, it is possible, they don't know, but I think it's personally possible that we could have the same library brought up to code, looking great, uh, maybe for less than five million, maybe for less than four million. The fellow pointed out that if we hadn't put the library there, the city planned on using the building anyway. It would still have to be seismically correct. And and conform to all the safety things. Same square footage. Why not just have the library in that building brought up to code? And I think as far as making it beautiful, hey, we've got all sorts of talent. I remember when Terry had a whole idea on how to change our entire uh, symbols of the city of Renton because she, she loves interior design and exterior. I think we have enough talent here. We could make it a prettier library if, if people think it isn't pretty enough. But the thing we're concerned about is losing the footprint over the, over the river. Keep the footprint over the river, get the real factors, and have King County Library System, if they're going to be with us, give us the building we want to put their library ideas in. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next is Dave Beaton. <clears throat> I'm Dave Beaton. I live in Renton. Last name is B-E-E-D-O-N. 
in prior meetings, I found a comfortable groove to address the, the mayor and the city council, so I'll continue with that process by reading a letter that I addressed to the mayor and the city council members, and I will give copies of this to the city clerk when I'm done. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just a, an ordinary citizen. I don't have any background in legal matters, but I am concerned, uh, based on my common sense, that there are some issues about legal matters that need to be addressed. And I'm speaking of the two interlocal agreements between the city of Renton and KCLS. Uh, one was signed in 2009 and a follow-on agreement was signed in 2011. As far as I can tell from looking at both, both are still in force. The former agreement might be out of date, but the latter agreement certainly is. The first interlocal agreement was signed in July 2009 and went into, into effect in February 2010 following voter approval of an annexation into KCLS. There's three sections of that ILA that I think merit review. One is section three, which calls for the transfer of title to the materials, collections, furnishings, and equipment in the main library and the Highlands Library from the city to KCLS. Now, why do I bring that up? Well, we've heard about the disposal of books, and I've heard personally about either the replacement or removal of furniture in the library. Now, the transfer of title has some conditions. First, the city has to perform an inventory of such assets, and the city clerk has informed me that somebody's looking for that right now. Certain items, computer-related and so on, are to be excluded from the transfer, and that both parties to the ILA have to agree on the contents of the inventory. The second section I'm concerned with is Section 7A, which, quote, terminates the prior agreement, which refers to the July 2nd, 2007 agreement. I don't know if that was an interlocal agreement or what it was called, but it was defined to say what was to happen, I mean, it was written to define what was to happen if annexation into KCLS did not take place. In itself, this really isn't notable, but it points out to an inadequacy of the 2011 ILA, which I'll mention in a moment. And the third section of the 2009 ILA that I'm concerned about is Section 10, which lists the events that could terminate the ILA itself. None of those events have taken place, so my, my view is that the 2009 ILA has not been terminated by its own provisions. And I'll follow up on that in a minute. The 2011 ILA went into effect on July 11th of that year, and I have four things about it that I think uh, merit consideration. The first two items are in section three and refer to wording, such as two new city of Renton library facilities, which seems to conflict with the notion that annexation turned the libraries into facilities of KCLS, <coughs> and the word new applying, uh, as I just mentioned, might be seen as contradicting the notion of renovating the Cedar River Library. I would think that the word renovated might be more accurate to describe the work that takes place. And section 3D says that KCLS will fund all library furniture, fixtures, and equipment, F, F, and E, library materials, staff, and day-to-day -day operational expenses. I'm curious to know how this relates to the inventory required by the 2009 ILA. It sounds here as if the existing materials and furniture are not considered property of KCLS. This seeming contradiction needs to be clarified. Section 7A of the 2011 ILA sa states that potential locations for the downtown library are 508 and 504 South 3rd Street. Well, this out-of-date information needs to be corrected. And I found nothing in the 2011 ILA that says it cancels or terminates or supersedes the 2009 ILA. Thus, I believe the following about the 2009 interlocal agreement. It's still in force because nothing has canceled it. It calls for an inventory of library assets before title to any assets is transferred to KCLS. And I believe the public deserves to see the results of that inventory of assets, especially when you consider that books have been thrown out and library furniture has been changed or removed. And if the 2009 ILA 
is supposed to be invalid, and I don't know that it is, but if it is, it should be formally declared so. But before doing that, I would like that assets inventory to be taken care of first. Excuse me, Mr. Beaton, I'm sorry, your five minutes are up. Okay. Um, so I think those issues need to be addressed. Whether or not the discussion of de-annexation takes place because we're being held accountable to those contracts. Thank you. Uh, next is Kathy Ossenkopf. I, I think I ruin your last name every time I call you. I apologize. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mayor, and guests who are watching on television at home. Um, I'm a resident of Renton. I've lived in Renton over 40 years. And when I discuss the Renton Library issue as a social topic among people in my church or other social groups, they wonder, why is this taking so long? I thought that had been settled with the election. You mean it's still going on? There's still concerns about the library over the river? You mean now it's going to be reduced in size by one third? <clears throat> a library of 15,400 square feet compared to a library currently at 22,400 square feet? And also, my goodness, the entry, the entry that people have used for 40 years is going to be demolished? Why? Citizens, not just citizens of Renton, but citizens of King County are asking, why is it taking so long? And why is the demolition of our beloved library necessary? I don't believe it's necessary. And I was at the meeting with the King County Library Service when they presented the open house to the citizens. And I looked at the citizens and their faces. And I saw the faces of many citizens on the assorted websites since the meeting last Tuesday. These faces did, were not faces with smiles. These were faces of sadness. I saw King County Library <coughs> System people who I happen to recognize, but none of them were wearing name tags and they were doing the presentations. How can the citizens of Renton walk up and talk with persons in that building and at that open house when they don't even identify who they are? And I also saw people from the city of Renton who were not wearing name tags, but I have become familiar with their names because I've been coming to these city council meetings concerning the library for over a year now. I was here a year ago when you had the volunteer award presentation. And now I'm here again. And I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a Renton volunteer, but I don't know if my name or my, my activities are part of what you recognize in this city. And I've reviewed the City of Renton website and the eight pages that you have on your website that talk about the library. And it goes back over a year and it says 22,000 square foot library. It says community input. It says an assortment of things that we've been struggling with for a whole year. So I just refer people back to what was actually presented a year ago and it's on the city website. And then I see nothing about the vote that happened last August. It was a big vote for the citizens of Renton. 76.4% is a big vote and I wonder how many councilmen sitting up there were elected with that number. Um, that's it. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Next is David Keyes. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. I'm probably the guy that you cited as uh, being impolite last week. But there was a reason for that. Um, last Tuesday night, 
a number of you, Mr. Prince, Ms. Palmer, Mr. Covington, at least, and there may well be <coughs> more of you, um, were present at KCLS's presentation. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay. Um, you saw a tremendous amount of frustration and a tremendous amount of anger from the citizens that were present. I hope you do not believe that that anger is just reflected <clears throat> at KCLS. People are very aware that those of you sitting here are our elected representatives. Um, I don't think that you particularly need to be held accountable for the presentation that KCLS gave. <clears throat> but I think you can expect to be held accountable for your decisions going forward if you ignore the kinds of things that came out on Tuesday night. And I'm sure you probably have a range of opinions as to what happened on Tuesday night. Um, I guess I'd expect that. But I would certainly ask you to take what happened on Tuesday night very, very seriously as you discuss whether or not to maintain a relationship with KCLS as the library provider. <clears throat> and I realize you're going to be discussing that beginning next week. And I want to thank you, Mr. Swicker, for making that motion last week. Um, as an aside, I'd like to um, give the city staff credit for not interfering with KCLS's presentation once it was underway. Um, they needed to stand or fail on their own. And um, I think they proceeded with that pretty much, unfortunately, as we expected. I'm glad that the city did not interject himself into that. So that was appreciated. Um, I want to uh, suggest also that you seriously consider the kinds of things that Mr. Allett spoke of tonight relative to the budget. The numbers that we're questioning primarily have to do with Greg Smith's project budget numbers that are estimated by Mr. Smith or his staff at KCLS. They are not specifically critical of the estimate that was done by Roan and Associates for the construction portion. And what we're trying to get at here is that the basic budget allocation that was arrived at by KCLS is, to say the least, very suspect. And I would hope that you feel you have good justification for asking a number of questions of KCLS on that. Um, I'll just close. Uh, Mr. Smith opened his <coughs> remarks last Tuesday in a statement. Mr. Smith is the facilities director for KCLS again. He opened his remarks with a statement that <coughs> a budget is just a budget. And if that statement had been made in a meeting amongst construction team members, it would not have been an inappropriate statement. Everyone would have understood the limitations of the budget. They would have understood the limitations of the estimate. And they generally probably would have agreed with that statement as it stood on its own. But Mr. Smith's estimates of budget are used as part of a decision-making process, both for KCLS in determining how much money they assigned to their architecture and design team, and to you to understand where our funds are going. And I'd suggest to you that there are two times when a budget is not a budget. One, when it's used, as many of us believe, it was used last summer to artificially sway a public vote. And the other, is when it is being used by one party in agreement to tell the other 
that their funds, their budget, in this case the project budget, are not sufficient to do what the first party is requiring in a task force. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Nicola Robinson. Mr. Mayor, the 30 minutes is up. Uh, Mr. Corman, would you I, like to continue? With yeah, I'd comment? like to um, move we suspend the rules and allow additional time for audience comment to uh, complete. Second. It's been moved and seconded to approve extending the audience comment period. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, Nicola Robinson, I'm a Renton resident. Uh, Mr. Mayor, council members, city staff, uh, this is short and sweet. So um, you'll be discussing de-annexation next Monday. Uh, would the mayor and council also consider discussing negotiation, renegotiation of the ILA? My question is, does the ILA adequately reflect and accommodate the unique needs and characteristics of the Cedar River Library? The ILA um, creates does the ILA create too many limitations by using the word new? Taking out the word new might allow for less focus on demolition and more focus on restore, upgrade, maintain, and on design. Renegotiating might also allow for more creative and appropriate use of funds. Money can be saved by removing the demolition option and using those funds to enhance what we already have. KCLS seems to like new, as seen in the numerous glass boxes it, it produces. <coughs> I'm also concerned about whether the um, KCLS's agenda fits with the goals of the mayor and council for the library over the river. <coughs> A statement made at the, ho the open house by the director of KCLS, quote, we don't want to operate a large library downtown. This comment might suggest uh, their main focus is to decrease their operating costs. <coughs> They're also trying to stay within the language, the contractual language of the ILA by giving us demolition and then a totally new construction. Does the city want 30% or more of its asset <coughs> demolished? Does the city want the best use of funds available? I respectfully ask if you would uh, consider renegotiation discussion of renegotiation of the ILA along with your discussion about de-annexation. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Judy Tabak. Council members, audience, and audience at home. Last Tuesday at the library presentation uh, with KCLS, I asked one of the very last questions. First, I stated that Renton taxpayers have uh, given $5 million in tax money per year for a total of $15 million for the three years we have been part of KCLS. In the case of de-annexation from KCLS, I asked Mr. Potasik, would we still have access to the library, Kent County Library System materials with the reciprocal agreement we had before? He said, not necessarily. Wouldn't that be a punitive action, Mr. Uh, Potasik? I asked. He walked away. Yes, $15 million in three years, and some on the council see this as a problem that could come back to bite us if we de-annexed. Frankly, I don't see the problem with keeping that tax money right here in Renton and not throw it into the big KCLS pot to be redistributed among the system. I'm not sure there are I'm sure there are other solutions available besides being connected to King, King County Library System. Let's discuss other options. In response to the Library Advisory Board member, she mentioned that we had 72% of the voters who voted to keep the library over the river, but that didn't represent the rest of the voters. 
or people, well, nobody was stopped from voting. It was a free, fair, and open process. So that argument is a false argument. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Beth Asher. <coughs> Hi, Beth Asher, City of Renton. Um, I've come up every week and I've talked about size, and I'm going to talk about size again, specifically something Mr. Potasic said on last Tuesday night. KCLS, you should be very aware going into the process of speaking about de-annexation, has consistently given you all, as well as us, misinformation, partial information, no information, and outdated information. The prime example of outdated information is that residents who have been following the issue have already seen documents far ahead of what KCLS presented you at the council retreat which I think was unconscionable and just plain ridiculous. Now Mr. Potasic said on Tuesday night that our library service area gave us 550 square feet per person for our library. Well he gets that by adding in Newcastle, Skyway, and Fairwood to our square footage, then dividing by the population of Renton only. This is like saying, if I want to sell my house and I need to find out how many square feet per person I have, I take all four houses around mine, add that square footage to mine, and then divide by the three people in my household. Hot dog! I've got 2,850 square foot per person there. Unfortunately, the statistic is completely false. My house is 950 square feet. That is a completely invalid statistic. And its use just indicates how little respect Mr. Potasic and his staff have for Renton residents and the council and you, Mr. Mayor. I think, again, it's unconscionable. They have consistently presented this type of information and they've presented it as truthful. Every time we've called them on it and said, hey, this is not correct. They simply walk away. They won't speak. This is evidenced again by Greg Smith. He was asked a budget question. His opening remark to the person who asked it was, a budget is just a budget. Well, I'm sorry. When you're a taxpayer and you've got a household where both people are working just to make ends meet, a budget is not a budget. A budget is also not a budget when you are taxed and elected to represent the people who are paying for this. A budget is not just a budget to us, be very aware. And it is evidently not just a budget to KCLS because there were two other things mentioned Tuesday night that we took exception to. Ruth, Ruth Blaco of Miller Hall said 11% were the design fees. Greg Smith has submitted up to 25% in design fees. I think you should very carefully go into that difference. That's a lot of money for rent to spend when we need it for other things like police, fire, and basic services. Again, misinformation, partial information. The other thing that she said that she had to retract later was that the plumbing, HVAC, and wiring upgrades were 85% of the budget. Now that made everybody jump up, oh my God, because they thought she meant that initial 9.1 or the remaining $8.9 million project budget. That is not true. We forced her to retract that. That 85% was 85% of the very small budget that Greg Smith directed them was what they had for construction, construction only. Again, misinformation, partial information, warping of the statistics. This has gone on consistently. Now I'd like to get into the size of service. Um, I would be very interested to see the results of that inventory if indeed it was taken, especially since it excluded computers. Interestingly enough, quite a few of the computers in that library system came from a Microsoft grant written by our own librarians before we de-annexed. They were not in fact provided by KCLS, but their ginormous amount of computers has been trumpeted at us consistently. Again, misinformation. This, this partnership has not been good. They are not a good service provider. They are not respectful. And we are very aware that the technique they use at the whiteboard scramble is called the Delphi technique. It was specifically um, formed to break apart groups and keep everyone from hearing the questions and answers so that reasonable input could not be taken. Again, it's a technique for breaking people up and for not 
getting actual input, for not getting coherent input, for not getting rational input. And we know this. We've researched it again and again. The residents have been on the, you know, on the go, ahead of the issue. And I was also glad to hear Ms. Yuri talk about the size of services and the system services. They'll shrink the library, will be two-thirds or smaller, will have effectively 1,250 square feet for a program space. Where will our study rooms go? Where will the rooms for ESL classes go? The community has consistently said this is a community resource. We want it used for this purpose. Yes, we like books. Yes, we like media. Yes, we like computers. But this is also a community resource. It educates. Okay, Ms. Asher, your five minutes are up. Okay. Again, I would say consider the size of services that we will have in that small space and consider your partner. Your partner has not been truthful with you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to address the council because you're not signed up on the list? Come on up and give your name and city of residence for the record. Mr. Mayor and the council members, I went to the meeting last Tuesday. Yeah, can you give oh, your name and right. city of residence for the record? I you. forgot who I am here. Um, <laughs> Myrn Larson uh, in Renton, Washington. Okay. Um, I went to the meeting the other night at the library system, and it seems to me there are two avenues that are open to us and to you people that represent us out here. Um, to either modify the interlocal agreement or the de-annexation. Uh, when Mr. Potasik got up and spoke, um, he <coughs> indicated about the interlocal uh, agency agreement, and I'm sorry, I came away with the impression he was putting all the onus on you people because he says we are doing what we're supposed to. We are supposed to provide a building that is consistent with the libraries that surround us, meaning brick and glass. And that's what their drawing showed, was all glass over the river. Um, if it fits in the budget, you know, really great, but we got a budget problem here. Um, then in the, and the others I back what they say, I did catch in, catch up on some of the fiscal problems um, management problems, some of the double talk and stuff. Um, remember, I, I spent 10 years being facilities director at the UW, so I'm sort of sort of used to this. And I was the only female. How do you think that felt? <laughs> um, I was always having to watch out. But in the, uh, the other avenue, the, the one is to modify the, the ILA or to de-annex. Um, a thought came to my mind is we already paid for all these schematics and these tests and stuff like that so I would ask if you consider de annexation to ask them to hand all that over since we own it and then the one thing that really bothers me about all this is the new castle library I watched that and watched it and watched it and that thing was shut down more times and I was told it was due to cost overruns um, I don't know if that's fair, accurate, or whatever, but in all my projects at the U, I never had any of them down to take that amount of time. And we never went over budget either. Um, I was on top of things all the time. So um, I, I, I'm just really, really hesitant that our taxpayers' money go into something that might turn out to be another Newcastle library. Um, that may be down the line, uh, the way those people operate. So um, my very last <coughs> request, and this is off in the future, after you decide what you're going to do, is that you have people, citizens, rent and citizens like myself and, and um, Mr. Keith, who's an architect, that have had some experience in all this, be able to sit in on the construction meetings. And that's where I was able to stop the modification proposals where they tried to slide things underneath my nose and run up the costs, and we stopped that. But anyway, um, those are my thoughts that either modify the ILA or the de-annexation, and I wish you all the best. 
you, you got the city of Renton really watching you guys. So anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. And Mr. Covington. If, is that we, if we're concluding an audience comment, I can offer a sure. few things. I, I, I tried to take some notes and obviously uh, may not catch everything, but I, <clears throat> what I was um, struck with Mr. Mayor and Council is um, obviously we have some very, very passionate people in the city of Renton and that's a wonderful thing. And I think the other general observation is we have a process that is we're in the middle of and that can be really frustrating when clearly this is a, a group that has educated themselves on the library and many of you all have had uh, a lot of experience with KCLS long before they came to Renton and so there's some some uh, uh, perceptions experience you all have that that create that um, a couple things uh, Mr. McCumber mentioned that um, it seemed to me that we could just fix the current building, uh, that would resolve a lot of issues. And I heard that last Tuesday. I heard a lot of people just say, let's just fix it. I had a 25 minute conversation with a couple of people that said that. I, there are two, two things that I think the council is gonna have to deal with next week. And again, we're in the middle of the process. So it makes it difficult to try to change midstream. The council adopted some guiding principles last uh, September that, so Mr. Potassic was correct in saying he was trying to follow the guidelines that had been given by the city. One of those was uh, to continue with some elements that were uh, some uh, guidelines given in the ILA, and that was to build uh, two new library facilities in the city um, uh, that would be consistent with or superior in form, function, and quality of other recently constructed libraries in the KCLS system. So there's a reason why the libraries that they are designing look a lot like the libraries that they already have. They're trying to be compliant with a contract that they have with the city. The council may decide to, and KCLS may decide they want to take a, a look at that, but that's the reason why mm -hmm. thus far they are designing, trying to design a library that is uh, c consistent with and at least superior in form, function, and quality. And so that said, I think they're, uh, we have had some comments tonight, and I think the, the uh, audience and, and the staff and those present were presented with um, a significant amount of costs that are going to be due to just getting the library up to code. And I think a lot of people uh, that have spoken tonight and others in the audience, and certainly the council knows that when you begin to fix one element of an older building, um, you can trigger pretty quickly a number of other code requirements. And that, I think, is what uh, KCLS is struggling with and what they'll obviously bring and present to us uh, on the 15th of April when they, when they present their schematic designs. Um, Mr. Beeden talked about the two ILAs. Uh, they are still in force. One, the first ILA was to talk about uh, what would happen if the city annexed and what would be some of the things that we needed to do. One of the specific elements was that the the inventory and assets of the city that were in the library buildings, including the library staff, would be transferred to KCLS. So uh, the inventory was done to define which of those items KCLS wanted and which uh, they didn't want. Uh, and so we'll, I'm sure we have that inventory somewhere, but it was not to uh, keep an inventory that at the end of some period of time, uh, that would then become uh, the city of Renton's. That'll be a whole other negotiation uh, if in fact there's ever a de-annexation. But right now, all of the assets that were th within those libraries went to KCLS, and subsequent to that, KCLS has actually refurbished and, and, and uh, put new furnishings and other things in both libraries. Um, uh, I think we've had another comment again tonight about the book being thrown out, uh, and books being thrown out. We had that last week too. Again, just to remind the council that um, books either that the city owned or that KCLS owns, that they purchase are public property and you can't just, there's a specific way in which you dispose of those. However, donated books uh, are handled in a different way. And what we tried to do when we owned the libraries and what KCLS tries to do is look to see if they can use those books. If they can't, they usually turn those books over to uh, their foundations and they then try to, to uh, sell them through a fundraising event or something else. If some books are in such poor condition that they, they don't think they'll have any resale value, they are recycled. And so the photograph, that the only th evidence that we've been able to find, unless somebody brings <laughs> some other evidence, was in 2010 there was a photograph taken of some paperback books in a recycle uh, bin. Uh, and uh, that's, that I think is where that is. So we're not, we've never been able to find any evidence of KCLS uh, throwing books away. Um, 
Uh, we will, with staff, will certainly look into one of the ILAs does talk specifically about oversight of construction estimates, and we have some pretty uh, experienced and smart people looking at that. We always will we'll look at that. We had some uh, discussion time. Mr. Keyes mentioned uh, uh, the KCLS uh, facilities director's project estimate versus the uh, architect's estimate. We'll, we'll look at those. I did notice that one of the uh, um, uh, just, uh, um, overheads that uh, Mr. Roulette had, I believe, I'm not sure. I got some information last week at the at the meeting that I, I, I need to just reconcile to see if he was using the same numbers that were presented at that meeting. But nevertheless, it, we obviously are very concerned and want to watch those dollars very closely. I think along those lines, KCLS is driven to that budget number. They were told we got $8.9 million, and so that's the, that's the number that they are trying to uh, design uh, the library around. Um, uh, they may come back to us. I, they certainly heard a lot of testimony last Tuesday and have in the previous months leading up to last Tuesday that a number of you are very concerned about the size of the library. So I suspect that they will come back to the council and want to have some discussion about that and what that means in terms of overall budget. Um, I, all I'll say, uh, Ms. Asher mentioned the, uh, the libraries per person. I, all I know about that is that KCLS uses the Puget Sound Regional Council's forecast zones, and so those do oftentimes encompass more than a single city. Um, the format of last Tuesday's meeting, I appreciate uh, that for some people it was pretty frustrating. Uh, I think, frankly, to a credit to KCLS and to the people that were there, they said, we, want, we don't want to break up, we want to stay together, and so KCLS ended up uh, doing both. They had small group discussions and then they came back and, and uh, met with the, the large group that chose not to go to the small group discussions. Um, and then finally, Mr. Mayor, we'll check on the Newcastle Library uh, issue, whether it was construction shut down or cost overruns. I know there were a number of, of, of um, complexities with that building. I don't know the details. I know that there was some issues that the, the city with permitting and some other things, but we'll certainly look into uh, uh, whether or not there was anything relative to construction uh, overruns or something that uh, would be that part of that. I, that's probably, I think, all that I got tonight, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Moving on to the consent agenda, we have three items for council consideration. Are there any items that council member like pulled for discussion? Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Coleman. I move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Corman, seconded by Mr. Taylor, that council concur with the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Corman. Um, no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mr. Taylor? No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Splicker? No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Ms. Breyer? Uh, yes, I have a finance committee report. Finance Committee Report Approval of Claims and Payroll Vouchers. <coughs> the Finance Committee approves for payment on April 1, 2013, claim vouchers 319 736 through 319 988, four wire transfers, and one payroll run with benefit withholding payments totaling $6,113,068.53, and payroll vouchers include 734 direct deposits and 53 payroll checks totaling uh, $1,508,928.99. This is signed by the three committee members. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, Ms. Breyer. I move that council concur with the Finance Committee report. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, seconded by Mr. Person that council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Finance Committee report, parking space lease amendment uh, with King County Metro. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence with the staff recommendation to approve Amendment 6 to the lease agreement with King County Metro for 200 parking spaces at the City Center parking garage to extend the lease term from uh, December 31, 2012 to December 31, 2013 with generated revenue of $3,000 per month. The Committee further recommends that the Mayor and City Clerk be authorized to sign the lease amend amendment. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Ms. Breyer. Will the council concur with the Finance Committee report? Second. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, seconded by Mr. Person, that council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Finance Committee report. Resolution to approve use of job order contracting. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the resolution of the City of Ranch in Washington making a determination to use a job order 
contract for public works projects. This is signed by the three committee committee members. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Ms. Breyer. I move the council concur with the finance committee report. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Breyer, seconded by Mr. Person to council concur with the finance committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, moved on to Mr. Prince. No unfinished business, Mr. Okay. Mr. Person? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, there's a Public Safety Committee report. Public Safety Committee report, uh, Animal Noise Code Amendment. The Public <coughs> Safety Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to amend sections 664 and 665 of Renton Municipal Code. Ownership of a habitually par parking dog is not inherently a criminal act. By amending the ordinance to ensure that only repeat offenders are held criminal, criminally liable, the prosecutors can focus their attention on the most egregious offenders, uh, not on those for whom a civil infraction is likely to deter their behavior. This proposed legislation would make a first and second violation of this chapter a civil infraction with a fine of $250 while maintaining a criminal penalty for any subsequent violations. It would also simplify the code for more standardized enforcement. The committee further recommends that the ordinance regarding this matter be presented for first reading. This is signed by the three committee members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. I move the council concur with the recommendation of the Finance Committee. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Ms. Palmer, that council concur with the Public Safety Committee report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Ms. Palmer. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Moving on to resolutions and ordinances. We have two resolutions and one ordinance. Uh, the first is the resolution regarding the contracting uh, under the job order method. A resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, making a determination to use a job order contract for public works projects. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Zwicker. I move the resolution be adopted as read. Second. Been moved by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Mr. Corman, that this resolution be adopted as read. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Yes. Mr. Mayor, the uh, second resolution that is listed, the committee report was not read out tonight, so we would not have that resolution. Okay. okay. So lastly, uh, ordinance for first reading regards animal regulation code amendment. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending section 664 and 665 of Chapter 6, Animals and Fowl at Large, of Title VI Police Regulations of City Code, by amending the definition of vicious, adding identifying language, and reducing the penalty for first or second time offenders to a civil infraction for keeping or harboring, harboring animals disturbing any person in the neighborhood by habitually howling, yelping, or other frequent or long continued noise. <coughs> Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. <laughs> I move the ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Carmen, that this ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Moving on to new business, Mr. Carmen. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Let's see. Um, I guess just one announcement, and that's that uh, there will be a committee the whole meeting on Monday, April 8th. 5.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, one item on that agenda has been mentioned already tonight, the King County Library System de-annexation discussion. And that's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Taylor. Uh, yes, uh, the Community Services Committee uh, meeting for Monday, April 8th will be canceled, and that is all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Zwicker. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm going to ask the council um, shortly to see if they'll support a motion. We're going to move the meeting's time for the Planning and Development Committee from our usual Thursdays um, to Monday, and I think the best way to do that, because it does amend, I think, a committee on committee report is to do so by motion. So with that, I would like to make a motion to move the Planning and Development Committee's regularly scheduled meetings to the first and third Mondays at 9 a.m. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Zwicker, seconded by Mr. Prince, that Council approve moving the Planning and Development Committee meetings to the first and third Thursday. Mondays. Monday. Monday. Oh, excuse me, from Thursday to Mondays. First and third Mondays of each month. At 9 a.m. At 9 a.m. 
Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. That is all, Mr. Mayor. Thank okay, you, Council. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Breyer. Uh, yes. Um, the Finance Committee will meet next Monday, the 8th, um, at uh, 5 p.m. Uh, and we have one item, the Meadowcrest Playground Interlocal Agreement. That's okay. all I have. Thank you. Mr. Prince? Yes, Mr. Mayor. The uh, Utilities Committee meeting for uh, April 8th has been canceled. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Person? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, no meetings to announce, but going along with the volunteer uh, theme for this evening, I had the opportunity last Tuesday to ride along on the meals uh, on Wheels program and I just have to comment mm -hmm. about the dedicated volunteers for that program. They show up every week and they have a route and they have their, their customers and each customer is very appreciative uh, when they get it. But the, the volunteers are so unique and so good that they know, you know, we place the bag here at this place or we do exactly this. So they, they custom fit so the people getting the meals feel comfortable. And sometimes those volunteers are the only lifeline to, uh, to kind of to the outside. So I just want to compliment the Meals and Wheels, the people that do our <coughs> program. And they do a fantastic job. And it was fun to go along on the ride along. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Person. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Corbin. Yeah, I was going to try and be true to a conversation I had with the city clerk last week. And I was just looking at the, um, the announcements we've made for different meetings um, and, and realizing sometimes maybe we're not that clear. So the Finance Committee is going to look at the Meadowcrest Playground Interlocal Agreement. Do we know if that's action or is that just a briefing? Uh, it's action. It is action. It's action. OK. Um, and then um, the Committee of the Whole, the one I announced, King County Library System de-annexation discussion. <coughs> I think, is that just a briefing? Uh, I guess I don't know how we... Discussion. It's a discussion. Just a discussion. I, we we're not I, I'm trying to recall the exact motion last week, but I, I think the motion um, was to have staff draft a resolution <laughs> um, that would de Yeah, well, yeah that so was. Would yeah. So we've, we've prepared that. We, we will okay. try to provide, we're, okay. we're hoping to provide some information that will come out in the, your packets that will also talk okay. about some of the issues. But so we'll, we'll have a resolution there. So we'd ha and so whether, whether or not we adopt that resolution, we at least have a report coming out of that. I think that's the, the point that clerk wanted to make was that um, we should be clear on whether a report's expected. So it sounds like for, for <coughs> both of these it would be. So good. Thanks. Okay. Ms. Palmer? No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thanks for not forgetting me. I bet. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I, okay. I forgot you. I for two years, that. I'm going to be first or last. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, moving on to audience comment. Is there anybody who didn't have a chance to address the council? Phyllis Forrester, Renton. I want to uh, bring something to your attention uh, about KCLS and overruns. They have been cited by the state attorney's or auditor's office on their overruns and were given guidelines to follow. So if you want to go to the, that auditor's report, it is posted. Uh, and they are famous for dragging their feet. And part of the cost overruns, of course, is starting late starts. And you uh, costs go up when you start late. And you can look at their record on that one. <clears throat> Since the original 2010 vote, uh, we have been, we citizens have been put in, in a confrontational uh, role against our own council, as well as KCLS. Um, it's, it seems uh, we keep, we've gotten this far, here we are at 2013, and we're still fighting to get the attention of our council. And yes, a lot of us do have history with KCLS. And I would, I really wish the rest of you had that kind of history with them. Uh, they have even abused the service part, and that's what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, there have been in many opportunities for all of you to jump in and say, okay, we're your duly elected people, and we're here to support you. And we, you have shown time over time that you do want to keep your library where it is. And you know, that was one of the things I heard at the Tuesday night meeting. I was walking around, I was just listening to people. 
who's gonna make any profit from this? Who's, who, why are they doing this? Why are they doing, who, they're looking at you. They're not, they might be looking at KCLS, but they're looking at all of you. And they're saying, what is going on? <laughs> they're just, the questions are going on. So your credibility is really out there on this one and you need to look. You need to do a lot of homework so that your credibility doesn't go down the tubes. And it's, it's going there really fast. Uh, KCLS is a totally underwritten tax-based entity. It's on property taxes. Uh, they need us. They need it, what we're paying into them now for property taxes, let alone this. They, heck, they can drag us on forever on this building thing. They want our bucks yearly, and a lot of it. They are hurting, and so uh, they won't want to miss out on that. I do think they can be made to as, because they are tax-based, we need taxation with representation. They are not giving us that. And you're not making them give them, give that to us. It's just like Tuesday night, we were the bad kids, naughty, naughty. No, we are upset voters. We are upset citizens. And we're not getting any satisfaction, folks. And we voted and voted. I don't know how many more times we have to vote to keep this thing going. Uh, so I would ask you to jump in there at any time and support those who have supported you with their vote. And uh, thank you. Hello, my name is Richard Bray. I live in Renton. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members, city staff, and you watching at home. I'd like to share um, a gathering that I attended um, this past Friday here in Renton. I joined a, a meeting of the Renton Area Nonprofits United, or RENU. This is a, a group that's sponsored by the Renton, Renton Chamber of Commerce, and it brings together representatives from nonprofit groups and those who serve them to share best practices and to network with one another so they can be more effective in serving the community. You know, it was a really incredible collaboration that the Chamber does with nonprofit groups. There was even city representation at this meeting, someone from the downtown library, and a representative from the support local business efforts too. We discussed uh, ways that nonprofits can make their missions better known in the community and how to show a return on donors' investments for local nonprofits. The Renton Chamber holds this distinction of being the only chamber in our region that sponsors such a gathering for the nonprofit community. I, I've worked with nonprofits for more than 20 years, and, and I'm <coughs> not aware of any chamber that brings together nonprofits the way we do here in Renton. Consequently, a strong nonprofit sector means citizens are engaged and working to make Renton a better community for all of us. This is a head of the curve type of collaboration. And this type of co collaboration has been unfortunately missing during this whole Cedar River library. You know, as was shared at last council meeting, you've spent more time on the library than any other issue in our city. Collaborate with your residents it's way past time. Too many areas of our city need attention and we cannot afford to waste any more time. Adhere to your own volunteer month proclam proclamation that was signed and shared tonight and collaborate with your residents who are giving countless volunteer <coughs> hours to save our Cedar River Library. The proclamation you sign says, the volunteers who give of their time and expertise to improve the quality of life for the citizens of Renton are a great treasure and deserve special recognition. Please live up to this proclamation by your actions. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Olette and Beth Asher, are you both wanting to talk again about the library? Yes. I want to okay, talk just the line. It's not going to be the same thing I said. Well, um, council, just a quick, uh, a quick second, comment. Second, just a moment, please. Yeah. Second audience comment has always been intended to catch 
citizens that didn't have an opportunity to speak to the council because of our 30 minute original um, audience comment policy. And, um, and I think we've been very liberal about letting people come up. And Mr. Olette's had 10 minutes already of the public in our time on the library today. So uh, while I'm not opposed to this, if it's the council's desire to have people come up as often as they want to to talk about it, I, uh, I want us to do it by motion. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Taylor. Motion to allow the uh, speakers to, uh, to continue speaking. Okay. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Taylor, seconded by Mr. Corman to allow additional comments on the library. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Mr. Ollett, go ahead. I appreciate that, Mr. Mayor, and I don't want to overextend my time and just be very short. And the only reason I wanted to make a few comments is I appreciate Jay um, and Mr. Covington's comments. And, and to me, it tells me that there, at least you guys are starting to look at the information that we're providing. And I would hope that you would, that this information is, is not public information because it's not given ahead of time. I understand that. But at least it's something you can take home and look at it. As far as the, as the, uh, <coughs> the uh, extended uh, costs provided by KCLS in their budget and so on, if you don't believe me, that's fine. But what I'm talking about, pay attention, is for $2 million, you could have the extra uh, square footage for the, for the facility, and you could have a whole bunch of people behind you instead of, instead of all this trash that's been thrown out. Some of you on the council may not be interested in this. Others are more interested than others. And I appreciate that very much. I appreciate your time in all this, because it, it's it would earnestly that I want to tell you that I think we can have a good library here, but it's a matter of, of working together and getting getting there. So surely you can find a couple of million dollars in in a city, and people would would I'm sure would come up with taxing themselves for the extra two million dollars to get a library they want. Thank you. And Mr. Olette, I want to say thank you. You've been very professional in your approach to addressing, and I know you've worked hard. Uh, whether we get to where you want to go, you know, we'll time I will understand. tell, but I know I you've worked hard on it. We appreciate it. If we work together on it, I think we can get there. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Um, yeah, Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Yeah, one of the things that Mr. Olette said, and I, I appreciate that uh, Jay's offered to look into those, I was curious about the assumptions for the off-site road work um, in as much as, um, um, you know, I could see where that would be part of a standard uh, KCLS library budget but I could also see where in this case it shouldn't apply, I, I wouldn't think, with the remodel. Um, I'll so look at I'd that too, and I'll give Mr. Olette and see. I, I saw an earlier budget, actually when we had the, the Big Five site, um, th those, some of those numbers were in there. The, the, I'm looking at a budget that was uh, distributed um, last Tuesday, and I, I'm just not seeing it. So okay. I'll have to have Paul show me where he, where he looked at it. But anyway, okay. in this case, obviously, with an existing building, with the existing <coughs> there's there clearly are some uh, there's some um, plumbing. That's not the right word. My mind escapes me. But Allocation. utility work. That's what yeah. it's called. I knew. It. Where's Greg Zimmerman? Yeah, He's right. a plumber. <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, Thanks. there's utility work, but I don't know that we have a lot of street work. Good. So we'll okay. look into that. Perfect. Thank you, Andrew. Beth. So now, I just wanted to talk about coloring outside the lines for a bit. If you're going to go into considering de-annexation, we have to have options. So some options, if we amend the ILA, would be we do HVAC, plumbing, and wiring separately because they are considered maintenance, not renovation. They will not trigger the five-year rule or the 50% rule. Then we do the biggie, which is seismic upgrades, you know, and insulation and better glass to bring it up to code. And then we make it pretty with what's left over. So there's one option. Another option is if we're de-annexing, we really have to color outside the lines here and look for opportunities. I know that there, uh, us being a manufacturing hub, there is a partner where we might get some grant money if we incorporate a business services center, say, in a space in there. And we also could think about the 29 other libraries in the system. Now, KCLS has reciprocal agreements with 29 other library systems, which may be the reason it takes a while to get a book. We also can have reciprocal agreements while we're rebuilding our collection. Nothing prevents us from doing that. We can have a distributed library, and there's another option. I just want to urge you to consider all of the things that you can possibly think of, and a few more. A lot of them are very viable, could be done by us, um, and also not to accept, um, 
I want to say pie in the sky uh, because that 13.1 million feasibility study that they did was not a feasibility study. No options were given, no differences between the options were given. And so I would urge you to come up with your own. I would say get someone independent, not beholden to us, the city, not beholden to KCLS. Do your own study or go back to the library master plan study that we did. Look at that again. Revisit all of those things and again, color outside the lines. Um, I'm sure there's a way to do it if we have to go there. Um, and I would just urge you to seriously give it consideration and please not brush it off because the, the level of frustration in the city I think is extreme and we want to be behind you. We so want to push you forward and be ahead of the curve. Renton's not the redheaded stepchild in the valley here. <laughs> we we sh are the seventh largest city in the state and we can come up with ways to do things and we will help you to do that. Thank you. Is there time? Yes. Uh, my name is Mark Nordlin. Um, I wanted to become part of Renton, but unfortunately I'm in West Hill and that did not happen. But anyway, um, what I wanted to say was, you know, with the annexation. Oh, sorry. I should probably know by now. Thank you. Um, if, if we're really serious about de annexation, I think we all have to take a look at what that's going to mean. And what that's going to mean is that, you know, apathy from the public saying we want this but not willing to pay for it, as well as previous council members and mayors that kind of let the library die on the vine. What I'm saying basically is we were all kind of at fault for letting the library get to where it was, to where we had to get to a point where KCLS basically brought us into the fold. And my concern was always that, you know, we're one of, or I'm sorry, two branches of 32. And so the reality is our budgets and that we are not going to have, we're not the large library that has a lot of pull. We're just one of many. But if we are really serious about de-annexation, we as citizens here need to say, look, we might have to be taxed, higher taxes. I mean, and, and if we really care about this library, how everyone seems to be, so be it. But also the council members and the mayor will also say, look, we're going to have to come up with the money and not let us get to this point where we're at, right, where we are right now. And even though I'm not a citizen of Renton, unfortunately, um, I was so impressed by the Renton library system. I've been part of Tacoma and Seattle that uh, I wrote into my will five years ago, 10% of my state to go to the Renton Public Library. Oh. Not the Highlands, no offense, <laughs> but to this library here, because I knew you'll never see one of those libraries again. And my whole thing with this is, <clears throat> you know, we're gonna need the space. So to cut it, I feel like it's just kind of cutting off your hand. So, um, I definitely have a vested interest in this, and I just really hope that if we are serious about de-annexation, that as a community, as well as a council, and you, Mayor, that we, not to be crass, but kind of put our money where our mouth is, and that we, uh, you know, basically do what we need to do so we can have e-books and get our collection. But I just want to warn everyone, it's going to take a lot of hard work mm -hmm. and money, and not just lip service. So. Thank well, you very much. I appreciate it. Very well stated. Thank you. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Taylor. Thank you for your comments, Mark. Uh, but please make sure you watch out for the ban banana peels on your way out of City Hall tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. So Kathy Osenkop again. And just to um, remind you that the citizens of Renton did pass two school levies recently and are building a new middle school. So the, the citizens are really interested in um, education and I believe they're interested in exceptional library services with an exceptionally well-sized library and I think <coughs> I think Renton could have an exceptional library system where the other people surrounding us would be begging to come in here and pay fifty dollars or a hundred dollars just to use our facility because they have to wait three weeks to get a book in their their service area thank you Thank you. Move we adjourn. Second. Move by Mr. Person, second by Mr. Zwicker that we adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned.
Go. You guys ready to practice? Yeah! Let's give it a try. Smoke rises. 